But it's not gonna be enough to save him. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, and I'm your humble narrator. Welcome back to some Gen 7 random battles. He's got an Ampharos out against my Florgis, and uh, he go goes ahead and switches that thing out as I go for the Toxic, and uh, I end up getting Toxic on my Trump shoes, which is just fine with me. I am going to switch my Florgis out here, however, because I do have a uh, Shedinja waiting in the wings, so I'm going to avoid his return. Um, I was hoping that the Ampharos would Mega Evolve, but yeah. Then it would have a Dragon Typing and be really weak to my Florgis. Um, but Shedinja is going to do some good work here. I get a free Swords Dance up, which is really, really nice, as he switches out his uh, Trump Shoes and goes back into Ampharos. Um, at this point, I'm wondering why he switched into Ampharos, and then I remember, oh yeah, Mega Ampharos has Mold Breaker. So that's going to get rid of Shedinja's Wonder Guard, which is uh, basically the only thing that keeps this 1 HP Pokemon in any sort of competitive play. And uh, yeah, X Scissor is going to do some decent damage, Shadow Sneak as well, but it's not quite going to be enough to take the Ampharos down, and uh, I eat a Thunderbolt to the face, and he takes away my, my 1 HP point, the only HP point that Shedinja has! And uh, my floor just is going to come back out because now that Ampharos is mega evolved and I'm going to go for uh, some sort of fairy type attack. But he brings in the uh, gum shoes in order to eat that up and he ends up taking a critical hit to the face which is really really nice. He's going to die to toxic damage. So uh, basically that thing ended up being switch fodder which uh, is pretty fortunate for me. I think without the critical hit he could have lived a little bit longer. But regardless now he brings in the Behem which uh, is a Psychic type from Gen 5, and I'm going to go ahead and stick a Toxic on that thing. I know I am faster, but uh, he seems to be setting up, and that thing is pretty freaking bulky, as you can tell. It would be a 3-hit KO, uh, but with the Toxic damage racking up, it should be only be a 2-hit KO. He gets a second Nasty Plot, which is uh, seeming a little bit greedy to me. <laughs> I don't know if that is suggestible. I would have probably started firing off Psychics after the second Nasty Plot, uh, but I know the Psychic's coming now, so I bring in my Registeel. Ooh, that is hurty. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 66% damage from that Psychic with two boosts behind it, but uh, this Registeel does have Rest and Sleep Top, so I'm going to go ahead and Rest now, and uh, I should be able to... to outlast him through the toxic damage. Even if the Registeel goes down, that's absolutely fine. Um, I don't see a whole lot of use for him in this fight, especially when he's uh, sleeping and you sleep talk and it's just random what happens next. So um, yeah, an interesting moveset definitely increases the longevity of a Pokemon, but not always the uh, correct move. As you can see, sleep talk made me use rest again, but I can't rest because I'm already asleep and uh, Ampharos takes it down with a Focus Blast, so... I've lost two, he's lost two, which uh, makes this a pretty even fight. My floor just is back in here to scare out the Mega Ampharos, and hopefully I'll get a free switch, or a free hit on whatever he brings in. And he brings in the Ninetales. This is the Alola Ninetales, which has a uh, Ice and Fairy typing. No more Fire typing for Ninetales. And it also brings Hail with it, which I think is really, really interesting. Usually you have the Ninetales that bring Sunny Day, but this uh, different form brings Hail, which I think is pretty cool. Also has a special move called Aurora Veil, which is uh, basically Reflect and Light Screen all in one. So, very, very cool Pokemon. I, I love seeing these Alola forms. I think there's maybe seven or eight of them. Probably the, the big fat Dark and Normal Raticate is my favorite because it gives a, a pretty nice boost to Sucker Punch. So he brings out his uh, Ninetales now and brings in the Bear Tick, Bear Arctic, um, which takes a Dazzling Gleam to the face, and that's doing some pretty good damage even with the uh, the Aurora Veil up. Unfortunately, not quite enough as he crits me with a uh, Icicle Crash, and down goes Florgis, who was uh, doing quite some work in this battle. Send in the Torkoal now, hoping to get rid of the Aurora Veil, but that is not the case at all. It is going to last uh, a couple more turns. And he sends in a Giratina, which is fucking scary. Luckily, I uh, go for Lava Plume and do get the burn on it, so that's going to cripple it pretty significantly if it is a uh, any kind of um, physical attacker. 
Unfortunately, I did forget that it had Levitate, and I went for Earth Power there, which was definitely not the move to make. Now Motham is in here, which is kind of just a joke Pokemon. I was saving it for uh, Switch Fodder, and uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do now. It just kind of dies to a Draco Meteor, and I'm like, oh great, now I get to switch into something else. <laughs> so um, this fight is going south very, very quickly. Uh, I've got two Pokemon left, he's got four. So, I'm um, not too hopeful about what happens next, <laughs> but the Relicanth is probably going to do some work. He switches out the Origin Form Giratina as I set up some Stealth Rocks. That's going to be really nice. And uh, Ampharos is not faster than Relicanth, which is an absolute surprise to me. Um, I'm able to KO that thing with an Earthquake. I thought for sure Relicanth was like one of the slowest Pokemon ever. But, uh, it seems Ampharos has it beat in that department. Well, he goes back into the Origin Form Giratina, reveals he has the Shadow Ball, which shows me that he's probably not completely a physical attacker. Uh, Relicanth uses Head Smash, which does really, really good damage. And, uh, since Relicanth has the Rock Head ability, it will not take any recoil damage. Unfortunately, Draco Meteor is going to be enough to take that thing down. Shazoom! And then, uh, all I have left is my Torkoal. He does have two Ice-type Pokémon, which is rather fortunate. Um, I just might be able to weather this thing, especially since Giratina has the uh, special... Ooh! He had the special drop, so he switched it out, but it's at 11% HP, so when he switches it back in, it's going to die, which is really, really nice. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Torkoal goes for the uh, Lava Plume, which was meant for the Giratina, but that's just fine. He brings in the Ninetales. That thing goes down. I think I'll be able to weather anything Bar Barrettic has to offer, and uh, magically somehow <laughs> I came through in this battle. It's absolutely uh, a shocker to me, <laughs> and probably everybody else. Uh, he gets the Stone Edge, it is super effective, but Torkoal's massive, massive defense allows him to hold out, and he'll switch into the Giratina for the loss. Super awesome. I love seeing that Stealth Rock KO at the end. <laughs> ah, what a good one. So friends, I'll see you in the next battle. Hopefully it's uh, equally as awesome. Join me there. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Date and I'm your humble narrator. Welcome to our second battle. We've got Shinotic out against the Love Disc and he goes for Sweet Kiss right off the bat. Which I'm a little confused about. I thought he would uh, end up switching so I go for the Spore here. 100% uh, Sleep Chance. But, uh, yeah, I was hoping to get something other than the Love Disc, which is kind of just, uh, foddery Pokemon anyways. So I also switch out. He switches into Noiburn. I bring in my Oricorio. Oricorio. <laughs> and, uh, the Noiburn switches items, takes away my life orb, gives me a Choice Scarf, which is, uh, kind of okay, I suppose. This fast Pokemon is now even faster, he's gonna make a great revenge killer, so I'm gonna pull it out, save it for a little later, and uh, send him my Bisharp, predicting the dragon move. There it is, Draco Meteor, able to weather that relatively well, and uh, he's gonna take some good damage from the life orb, special attack drop, and all that good stuff. Um, he U-turns out, which is probably a pretty good move, allows you to keep the offensive momentum even with a special attack drop. And uh, he sends in the Metachem now as I go for knockoff, which um, I don't think is going to knock anything off because it is a Mega Evolving Metacham. And it is going to Mega Evolve, fake me out. I'm hoping that I can uh, get a hit in here somewhere, but I don't know that it's going to happen. So uh, yeah, fake out is going to flinch me. A little sucker punch, but it's not going to be enough to take down that Metacham. And he KOs by Sharp with a high jump kick. If I would have had a Ghost Pokemon, I could have switched into that, but, um, yeah, as it is, I'll just give up the Bisharp in order to get a free switch. And the free switch is back into Sheenotic. I didn't expect that thing to have the Ice Punch, so Sheenotic goes down. Boom! And already we're at a two Pokemon disadvantage. Really, really not a good thing. Most of my Pokemon are weak to Ice. Uh, I send in Mudsdale, which has a pretty good special, or physical defense. And it is a, a new Ground-type Pokémon from Gen 7. I just go ahead and go for the Payback uh, right there, because I don't really have much else to do against it. I don't want to lock myself into a Ground move, especially because uh, he has that Noivern waiting in the wings. So he sends out Per Ugly now. Um, he's not able to flinch me with the Fake Out, which is really, really nice. I've got Inner Focus, 
and uh, I end up getting a free payback on it. Not quite enough to take it down, even with its life orb damage ticking away there. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm at a bit of a, a disadvantage now. <laughs> Hopefully this Oricurio can do some, uh, some work for me. And yeah, from 5% HP, okay, I go for the U-turn, and uh, I'm gonna have to reveal my next Pokémon before he reveals his next Pokémon. So he's gonna get the switch advantage here. That ain't no good. I got a Nihilego, but um, yeah, he probably has something to counter it relatively well. Herizion is an interesting choice. Uh, it sets up a substitute, which uh, I don't know if that's the move to make. I'm just gonna start going for Sludge Waves now. And uh, it's going to be a super effective hit, so he might realize that and end up switching out on the next turn. Yes, he does. That's just fine. I'm going to get a free sledge wave on whatever switch is in, which is the sleepy little love disc. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully he doesn't wake up and get the uh, water type attack on my rock type Pokemans. Uh, I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to take this opportunity to set up some toxic spikes while that thing uh, snoozes away. And basically rolling the dice here, hoping beyond hope that it doesn't wake up. But even if it does, I think I can weather one water move. And it doesn't end up waking up, which is really, really nice. So Sludge Wave will finish that thing off. All it did was nap for the whole battle, which is pretty cool. And um, I've got an advantage against Verizion. Noivern is going to be a bit of trouble, but it is at half health. So uh, I might be able to weather whatever it does. Look at that. Uh, I got the special defense boost from Beast Boost, which is uh, an ability that increases your highest uh, your highest stat. So that's really, really nice. Able to eat up that Draco Meteor and KO that thing with Power Gem. Um, now he's got Excelgore as his last Pokemon, so... I think this one is basically in the bag. He does use Yawn here, and I don't want my Nihiligo to go to sleep. Um, yeah. Power Gem is going to take that thing down into Poison Range, basically, and uh, I'm going to switch my Nihilego out of here just in case I do end up needing it. Final Pokemon is an Infernape, which is uh, also super effective against his last two Pokemon. He goes for Giga Drain here, but it's not going to be enough to save him from Toxic Damage, or Life Orb Damage for that matter. So Verizion is going to get a Fire Blast to the face, and that will be uh, the end of this fight, and also this episode consequently. Thank you so much for watching, friends. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I sincerely hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. And if you do, friends, I'll send you a fanny pack so you can like look like a tourist wherever you go. Because that's pretty cool, I heard. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again, and until then, bye bye! One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.